Greetings, it's Tanya Tash, it's GR Nerds. We're in the city today. We're going to go and have a look at a road cutting up at Adelaide Street. It's really interesting. So, uh, uh, I haven't been in the city for quite some time and uh, we'll uh, have a wander through. We'll look at some uh, interesting rocky stuff on the way and we'll check out a bit of old architecture up there. It's pretty cool as well. So anyway, you know what I'm going to say. Let's rock. Interceptors, immediate launch. Well, folks, here we are above Kumbukapa again. I thought we'd take the helicopter today because, you know, you can. Um, I do have a pilot's license, but I don't have a helicopter license, so uh, we'll have to do this one a little virtually. And I don't know how good your license is. You're never going to be able to fly down Adelaide Street in a helicopter. You probably do it once, but you won't do it twice. Anyway, what we're looking at today is a cutting in the top end of Adelaide Street. It's got some interesting geology in it. It's also surrounded by some fairly interesting history. So we'll just dodge these buildings, the blades on this, this uh, virtual helicopter nearly hit these virtual buildings, you've got to be a bit careful. There we are, here's the cutting here, we're going to whiz back, spin around, there's the old castle main building there, we'll talk about that a bit. There's Adelaide House, or the Deanery, as they like to call it, with the cutting in front of it. And uh, you wonder why we ran out of tool in Brisbane? There it is there, all stacked up in St John's Cathedral. Anyway, back to base. This is Column in a building in town called the Manor. And this column is made out of Benedict stone. This is artificial stone built in the old torpedo factory in the valley. Nearly a hundred years ago. And it, as you can see, they've actually stained it to look like tuff. And the chips in it, I'll just get you a close up. Some of the chips in it are tuff. Matter of fact, in this particular one, most of it is tuff. So there you go. Benedict Stone, made by our old mate, Reverend Duhigg. You can see where they stained this one with an oxide of the concrete. Hey, thanks for that, Flegel. Well, here we are, and uh, here's a line that delineates between the narrow leaf fernbell beds, the shales, and over this side, we've got a bunch of quartzite and argillite. They're still part of the narrow leaf fernbell beds, but it's a different rock type, as you can see. Uh, the bedding's slightly very different, and the uh, if you touch it, it just falls to bits. So uh, let's have a look at how old we are here. Well, the whole lot's the same age, um, and it's down here. It's um, Odovisium, we're talking 428 million years, half a billion years nearly. Uh, and it's uh, just sitting there for you to see. When I was a kid, there was a footpath on that side. You could actually walk along there, but you can't anymore because it's too dangerous. Don't even try. It's only rock anyway, nothing you're going to see. But at the end of this, you can see the shales coming down again. And on the end, when you can get to, there's the good old shale. And they believe that is a great big piece of fault gouge. There's a fault in there, sand has gotten into it, it's been gouged between the rocks, grounded up into argillite, it's a really fine mudstone, and quartzite. And then it goes back to shale again. And just, you'll see in a minute when I show you the geology map, just across the road here, is the uh, Brisbane Tuff. And the Brisbane Tuff is much younger than this. It's only about 250 million years old, so it's sitting on top of all of this. Well, folks, here's our geology maps. The uh, purple is the uh, Narrowly Fernvale Formation. The green is the uh, Brisbane Tuff. 
yellow is the uh, just gravel from the river. So there you go, there's the side of our cutting and the, and the church and the building we're about to talk about. You see Clark Lane there? And that's where the tuff is, just up the road. Not far away at all. It's sort of where Cathedral Place is, if you know Brisbane that well. Here we are in Clark Lane, right up the top of Adelaide and Ann Street. And what we have here is a really old tuff wall. This thing has been here a long time. Just looking at its style and the type of stone that's in it. Well, well, well over a hundred years. I'll see if I can find some sort of uh, history on it. But we talked briefly about why sandstone decays and it's not great for walls, but as you can see, Tuff also has its problems. If you choose the wrong tuff, it'll also decay. But this wall is in beautiful condition and it's just a lovely piece of tuff. I would think this is Kangaroo Point stone, just looking at the colour of it. it. Seems to have a lot of iron in it. Thought I'd get you a close up of this tuff actually in this wall. It's full of porosity. Look at all the little gas bubbles and it's got bits of rock in it. As you can see there's a bit there, quite a few bits here, it's a very sharp rock too, so it looks like it's shale that's been picked up. Let's see if I can find you one with some river pebbles in it. Here's a piece of uh, tuff here with some holes in it, those holes are natural by the way, they're just gas holes. But as you can see right in the middle of this, I'll put my finger in there for you to see, there is a piece of quartz sharp edges and that quartz has been in that rock for 250 million years it's actually another piece just over here so yeah this is just in a rock wall in Clark Lane as you can see there's a lot of porosity in that which means when that took settled it was full of gas and it the gas was still in there when it turned when it went solid this stuff is called rhyolitic ignimbrite. See, I did learn how to say it. And it, this is welded ignimbrite. It is tough stuff, tough. We can have that argument another time. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. Well, folks, it's a beautiful old place called Adelaide House or the Deanery. Uh, it's quite an old building. It was uh, built for a bloke called William Hobbs. So I'll put his picture up on the screen here. He arrived in Brisbane in May 1949 as the ship's surgeons aboard the uh, Chasley, one of uh, John Dunmore's ships. Uh, in 1853, Hobbs commissioned Andrew Petrie, there's that name again, to build him a two-story house overlooking the river. And there it is there. And. Uh, when Sir George Bowen was appointed the first governator in Queensland, 1859, they didn't have a government house, so they hired, they rented Adelaide House, as it was known then, on Adelaide Street, strangely enough, uh, for 350 quid a year. Uh, this is what it looked like then. This is as they were digging the Adelaide Street cutting. I was in there and I just, you know, parked in around, walked in through the fence, had a bit of a look. People do live here, so you don't get too carried away. But it is a really, I mean, it's got a lot of modern detritus tacked onto it, like air conditioners and TV antennas or whatever, but it's a pretty cool place. But it's one of its great claims to fame is this is where Queensland was proclaimed in 1859. And if you ever want, this is um, St John's Cathedral, and if you're ever wondering why Brisbane Tuff is all quarried out, uh, there it is. My God, that's a lot of tuff. It's pretty though. It's a, it's a stone that I really like. Anyway, that's where we got to from the uh, uh, the Adelaide Street cutting. Let's find some more cuttings. Well, folks, that's it. Heading home. Done the Adelaide Street cutting. If you've got any cuttings in your area that are, you're interested in, you want me to have a look at them, flick me an email. The email address is in the channel description. Anyway, till next time, keep rocking. T-Rocks out.